everybody. Welcome to another one of our Facebook Lives that uh, we're beginning to do more routinely now. I'm really excited about it and we've had a really great response from all of you. I did have a, uh, an early morning email from a customer in South Carolina, our friend Samantha, who said I needed to uh, buy a little time in the beginning to give you an opportunity to get your computer set up, get, uh, get your cup of coffee ready, and get the sound uh, up so that you can hear us. So I'm uh, filling a few minutes here just to get started and get oriented a little bit. But we've been having this discussion this morning at the office about what do we think people are sewing right now? And did we just get the sound on? All right, can you, do I need to start over? <laughs> we now have the sound on. Well, you know, one of these days we'll get this right from the very beginning. I don't know when that will be, but um, We'll work on it. Anyway, um, we're talking about what we think people might be sewing. And I actually think that there are two kinds of sewing going on. Well, maybe three. I know that a lot of you are making masks and caps and other sorts of things uh, that people are needing, and that's fantastic. Uh, but in terms of our personal sewing, I think there are two things going on. There are some of us who are just not really of a mind to get our heads wrapped around a really serious project and so we're making simple things. And then there are those who are digging out the project that, that they started about five years ago and got stumped or tired or it was too much for them at the time. They've dug out those projects and they're working on them again. Me, I'm kind of doing both actually. I have dug out a couple of Alabama Channon skirt kits that ha require hand stitching and I've actually completed one and I'm working on another one. I'm working on a jacket that has <clears throat> layers of fabric and uh, embellishments and hand stitching and applique and all of that that's taken a lot of time. But I'm really enjoying the process of both machine sewing and hand sewing. And I'm not in any hurry to finish this because I am not going to the opera anytime soon. And then on the other hand, I'm ready to uh, put out a great little quick something that I can sew in a couple of hours. Actually, I've never sewn anything in a couple of hours. I don't know why I say that. Uh, that I can sew in four or five hours. That seems to be my minimum amount of time that requires that I require to make anything that I sew, whether it's a simple t-shirt or some simple pants. But what, however you're sewing, uh, we're glad you're sewing. And there was an article about our business, actually, in our local paper. Uh, a couple of days ago about how we are engaging our customers and it was really interesting for us to talk about what we are doing and this Facebook Live is pretty much an example of what we are trying to do to keep people engaged and inspired and keeping you all sewing and we so appreciate all of the emails and phone calls and uh, notes that we get from you all about how much you appreciate what we're doing so I'm pretty proud of our our business and how we're we're staying uh, on top of things at the moment and things feel pretty darn good and the sun is out in Topeka, Kansas and I tell you what that always helps when we watch things turning green and, and it, spring is really here and, and it, there's always hope and freshness about um, a springtime that's coming upon us. So today's topic is about the easy part of sewing and I don't know about you but I like to wear fun pants in the summer that are easy to make, easy to wear, and I call them my sort of non-serious pants. Elastic waists, maybe they have some pockets, uh, various lengths from full length to something a little bit above the ankle, flowy so that the air can get through. You know, in Kansas and wherever I go, it seems in the summertime, it's hot, it's humid. I want the air to come through my pants, so I'm not very interested in, in wearing super tight pants in the summertime and I'm not and my jeans have gone away for the moment. So we're going to talk about summer pants and I'm going to talk about four different things basically. First of all, we're going to figure out how to find the right size, what size to make. Then I'm going to go walk you through a few of some very basic alterations uh, for pants that you can do on your own. This is not uh, the kind of pants fitting that requires 55 measurements and two hours of uh, implementing and putting those uh, numbers into your computer and spitting out some sloper size. This is what you can do at home in a, a short amount of time to get some pants ready to make. 
I'm going to talk about the three pants patterns that I recommend for summer that we have. And finally, I'm going to finish up with some recommendations on fabrics. I was also asked this morning to, to tell you what not to use for pants. So that'll be kind of fun as well. So I'm going to show you actually uh, four styles of pants, three that we already have and one that's coming. So I'm going to give you a little sneak peek. I'm going to start off by talking about the Hudson pants. And the Hudson pants, are, they've been around a while. This is the pattern. It has a great top as well. But for now, we're going to talk about the pants. And I think one of the styles and trends that's happening in pants right now is that there's something interesting going on at the bottom of the leg. And in this case, there are two darts, two in the front and two in the back, that create a little bit of a bell shape to the pants. So it brings them in, and even though they're nice and full and loose, the profile changes at the ankle, or slightly above the ankle, and creates a nice bell shape. Easy elastic waist. Uh, this happens to be made in a cross-dyed linen, so two different yarn colors making up the cross-dyed effect. The next one is our widest leg pant called the West End Pants. And this is the first time in a while that we had added a pocket. And I love this pocket because the actual pocket bag is one pattern piece. So there's only a little seam across here and there's a fold here, so there's not very much bulk. It's very easy to make. This pocket we are using in a lot of different pants, and you could put it in the Hudson pants as well, uh, or any of your pants pattern that you like. But you can see that the legs are very wide, and when you wear a profile like this, you want these pants to be shorter. Now, certain tall people can wear these pants to the ground, like my daughter, for example. She looks great when her pants are on the ground. But for most of us, we're going to be able to, only going to be able to uh, wear them if they're a little bit shorter and kickier, I call it. Again, a, a one-inch elastic waist. This particular fabric, I'm going to talk about a little bit more, but this is viscose and nylon, and it forms a little bit of a crinkle. The third one is the Picasso pants. And I don't know what's going on in this world, but this has become our most popular and best-selling pattern of all time to date. Uh, I think it's because this is a, is a style that we're seeing and ready to wear all over the place, and maybe we have one of the few patterns that's available. But it's, it's called the Picasso. It doesn't have a true side seam. It has a side panel, so there's a seam in the front and a seam in the side back, and then the bottom, there's a seam across here, and it has these four or three wedges that create this shape. This time we've borrowed a waistline treatment that we have on our Valencia pants that's flat across the front and then elastic in the back. Very comfortable. These are meant to be oversized, loose, easy, breezy, and this is made up in one of our laundered linens, which I'm also going to talk about in a minute. It's the pants that I have on in black linen that I'm sure you can't see, but I wear these year-round in various different fabrics, but especially great for summer. Now, for those of you who are members of So Confident 2020, your third pattern that will be coming in, let's see, May, June, July, August, is the Annika pants. And this is our straight leg pant with a side seam and again using our great pocket. This is in a cotton and silk fabric, I believe. I think mm -hmm. that's right. And we've also lined them, which I'll talk about in a minute as well. So Annika pants. That's an exclusive pattern for the So Confident 2020 members. All right, so how do you decide what size to make? Well, unfortunately, you have to measure yourself. And you want to start with putting some elastic around your waist. And because our pants, excuse me, I have something in my eye that I'm, is driving me crazy. All right, thank you, I'm better now. Um, so you want to start with one inch elastic because this is the size of elastic that we use in our pants. And you want to do that if you use an inch and a half you use half inch, whatever you use, put that width of elastic around your waist and pin it in place. 
And then you want to measure your full hip. That's always kind of a scary thing for some people. Um, but you know what? It's the number one measurement that you need as a starting point for making your pants. So we use a tape measure here that is pretty specific. It's first of all in inches on both sides and it has a number one at each end. And the reason we like that is so that you can put it around you and then taking the other end, you can figure out how far down that measurement is from the bottom of the elastic. So it's a two in one tape measure because you need to know where you are the fullest. All right, so you've measured your full hip and your stride and you want to measure the total length that you want for the pants. Because in certain pants, particularly the Picasso, you're going to want to nail the length right away. You're not going to want to wait until the end and say, well, I'll hem them at the end. So you want to know right away what length you want the pants. And if that's a difficult measurement for you to do on your own, I suggest maybe finding a pair of pants in your closet that you like the length of and measure those. And measure the side seam, not the inseam, but the out seam from below uh, the waistband to the bottom, the finished bottom of the hem, and that will be your total length. All right, so you know your hip measurement, and you can go to the back of the pattern. Every chart on the back of every one of our patterns is the same because these are body measurements. So you would find your hip measurement and find the hip measurement on this chart and determine what category you are in. Well, what if you're in the middle? What if you're between a medium and a large or a large and an extra large? Well, then you have to look at the style, but mostly you have to measure the pattern. I know that seems like a foreign concept to some of you, but it's going to have to happen. So let's say that you have uh, determined that you think you're a medium. All right, so now we're going to, let me pull this in here. Probably want to start with the back pattern. And although I, it doesn't really matter, but you already know that, let's say you've measured and you're, the fullest part of your hips are seven inches down from your waist. So you're going to measure down seven inches to a point along the side seam and you're going to draw a line that's perpendicular to the straight of grain and you're going to measure from this seam line to this seam line. You're going to measure the back, you're going to measure the front, you're going to add those two measurements together multiply that by two to get the full circumference of this pattern. Then you need to think about ease. For these pants, these three or four pants that I've shown you, you're going to want to have some room in there. These are not meant to be hugging pants. They're meant to have some ease. I think that four inches is minimum. I like six, six inches. But think about that term, pinch an inch. If you can pinch an inch, on each side of your pants, then you know you have four inches. One inch, one inch, one inch, and one inch. So four inches minimum, and more than that might be a personal choice for you. It usually is for me. So does this, is this pant measuring four inches at least larger than you are? If not, you might want to go up a size. If it has 10 inches of ease, you might want to come down a size. So now is your time to determine what size is going to be your starting size. So now you have your size determined. All right, the other measurement that you're going to, did I, I don't know if I said this, uh, you need to measure your full hip and the full length. I don't think I said you need to measure your stride through the crotch. So you take the tape measure, below the uh, elastic in the front, go through the crotch and up to the back and measure that. And then you're going to want to add one and a half to two inches to that number, whatever that is. It's a very important number. In altering pants, all of the lengthening and shortenings happen first and all of the widths 
are second or last. So the very first thing you're going to do is to measure and possibly adjust the stride measurement on the pants. So on the back, I have determined the finished measurements again, the points for finishing on the seam allowance, and I want to measure this, this crotch distance. So we have this fabulous tool called a curve runner. This is my new favorite tool, and it has inch increments on it. So there's a little zero here, and I'm going to put that zero on the point, and I'm going to run that along the seam line. I've come to my 12, which is full circle, so now I'm at 14 and a half. I'm going to do that on the back, I'm going to do that on the front, and I'm going to add those two numbers together and compare that to me. Now, if you have a tummy or a larger derriere or whatever, you might need to increase this. And you also need to think about sort of your, the condition of your soft tissue. You know, when soft tissue, if you're, if you're a yoga instructor, you might not have much soft tissue. But if you're like most of us, when we sit down, things spread. And so you need room for that to spread. And that's part of what's built into this number. So whatever your number is, in my case, I know I'm 29, and I'm going to make sure that the combination of the back and the front measure 29. But what if it's 27? I need to add two inches, meaning that I'm going to add one inch in length to the back and one inch in length to the front. And I'm going to do that across this point where I'm the fullest. So I would slice this pattern, I would spread it, insert some paper for about an inch, front and back, and then I would true up my cutting lines, and I would have that new length. That's my first length. After I've done that, then I'm gonna measure the side seam, clear down, starting at the finished point again, to the finished hem, and compare the total length. And most people are either right on, or they need to shorten. It's it's rarer that people have to lengthen but either way that happens at the knee and the way to determine that on our patterns is we either have a line for you to lengthen and shorten or we have a notch and the notch on the out seam and the inseam indicates where your knee is or might be what kind of sort of is and that's where you would lengthen and shorten the pattern if you need to shorten a pattern more than six inches you might want to do that in two places so rather that at the one place at the knee, you might measure up three inches above, three inches below, and calculate that so that you are length, uh, shortening three inches above that knee line and three inches below that knee line, whatever the number might be. So that is lengthening and shortening crotch and then total length. Now for most elastic waist pants, we don't have to worry too much about the waist, but if you do have uh, a larger waist, then you may want to you know, straighten out some side seam lines or even the back lines, but normally that's not gonna happen in elastic waist pant. So those are your basic determining your size and lengthening and shortenings. Now there are a couple of common um, alterations that you need to know about. And one is if you have a tendency to have a pant that's tight across your butt, or if you know you're full there, a really common thing to do is to add more fabric right here in the stride. And the way to do that is to first get the cap off the magic marker. There you go. Um, notice I'm using this uh, different sort of curve here has a French curve on one end. But that it, think about this as adding more fabric. Right through there. It makes a huge difference. If you are very flat here in the back, you do not need to do this, and you might want to take a little bit of a pinch right across that line, maybe a half an inch pinch, and blend that pinch out to the side seam just to lift this pant a little bit and get rid of some of the excess fabric.
And then for the front, a pretty common thing to do is to allow a little more fabric for a tummy. So where this curve begins to straighten out, you will blend that out a quarter to a half an inch. And starting at the side seam, you want to bring that up so that you're, you're capturing a little more fabric right through the tummy area. Now there are more major alterations for both of those, a tummy and a, a fuller uh, derriere. And I recommend a book called The Perfect Fit. Um, if, I think we'll post that on Facebook as a resource. We don't sell the book, but it's a, if you're going to want to buy one great fitting book, it's the book that I use most often, and it has more major adjustments for some of these kinds of things we're talking about. All right, so those are some simple pattern alterations and how to find your size. All right, uh, let's talk about fabrics and style and all of that. Mm -hmm. Do we have some questions? Do you want to take questions about fitting sure. now? Okay. Why not? All right, um, so why not measure the inseam? You talked about the outseam. Because the inseams can vary on every pant in terms of how much depth there is to the crotch. Some crotch depths, there's a lot, some less. I want to know the exact length from on the outside of the pants because every inseam is very different. All right, and then what if your leg length is different for each leg? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, is it a hip, uh, a hip issue, one hip is higher, or is it actually a leg is a different length? I would think that, I've not run into this, so I'm, I'm shooting from the hip here a little bit, but I would think you would want the pants to be level. If you want to discuss that a little bit more, why don't you call me uh, sometime or email me, and we can talk about it a little bit more. Okay, that's it then. Okay. All right. Um, so, let's talk fabric. One of my favorite fabrics currently is a fabric that is a blend of viscose and linen. Now viscose is rayon. I think a lot of people know that. Rayon and viscose are used fairly interchangeably. Granted, viscose is rayon. It is in the processing of how the rayon is made that is called viscose. So that's a little bit maybe too technical. But when you see the word viscose, you know it's rayon and it tends to come from uh, European sources rather than Chinese sources, and I'm probably even overstating that, but at any rate. So this particular pant, which is the Hudson Pants, this is in the viscose linen, has the flavor of linen, which I love for summer. I don't always love the wrinkling, although I've learned not to let it bother me. I just let it wrinkle because it's what it does and it's part of its beauty. But the fact that it has viscose in it allows it to wrinkle in a little bit different way, not quite as rumpled, and it just has a little more of a refined look to it. I, I just love this fabric, uh, and, we, and because of that, we have one, two, three, four, five, you know, 10 or 12 colors of it. Everything from this beautiful uh, pale pink, which is the color of the season, to my kind of green, you know, is there a better color than this green? I don't think so. Not in my world. To, of course, black, navy, white, off-white, red, and so forth. So check that out. For the West Ends, now's your opportunity to use some stripes. We have a lot of stripes, uh, from very colorful stripes to very neutral stripes. But this is viscose. I should check that before I say that. Uh, yes, it's rayon with a little bit of nylon. Whenever you have nylon in a fabric, it gives it a little bit of stability and it sometimes allows it to crinkle a little bit, which I really like. <clears throat> so it's a permanent uh, crinkle. But in terms of some stripes, uh, I think this would make a really great pair of pants in a simple stripe. And notice these are vertical stripes, but look at this drape. This is what you're looking for, in my opinion, in a wide leg pant. Something that's very drapey and going to be slimming because there's a lot of fabric in a wide leg pant. 
for something very neutral. This one is linen and cotton blend, so that would be very cool and comfortable. Again, has a nice drape to it, vertical stripe. But you could wear all kinds of neutral colors with this or pop it with a fun color as well. This is a, a beautiful new jacquard weave stripe. So there's an interesting sort of Bargello zigzag pattern in the weave to this linen. Make a great pair of pants. And then of course, <clears throat> oh, I need to talk about this one. Go back to this one. This is the one that's the viscose and nylon that does crinkle. So you can't press it out. And it gets better as you wash it. It's beautiful blue. We have red and burgundy. And I'll show you a couple of other colors here in a minute. The West End pants look great in a print. Sometimes I don't want to always have a print on the top of me. It's, it's sort of like, you know, I have glasses, um, I wear earrings, I maybe wear a necklace. It's like too many things going on on the top of me and I want to wear something solid on top. But I like to punch it on the bottom with a great print. So this is rayon, a rayon print. Lots of colors to work with here my favorite greens and some beautiful blues, some grays, even white, crisp white would look great with this. Now, compare that to this. This is polyester. They both have the same flow and drape. This one never wrinkles, it's polyester. Now, if you live in the humid, hot climates of the world, Polyester may not be your friend, although with this amount of air going through the wide leg of this, it might be all right. This, on the other hand, the rayon is going to be more comfortable. It's going to be cooler to wear. But this one wrinkles, rayon wrinkles. So if you're traveling, maybe you think about polyester. If you're not traveling so much, maybe you think about rayon. But don't forget the great prints for the bottoms. I also want to point out that the West End pants make great shorts. And if you're a golfer, that's a wonderful sort of skort-like golf skirt-ish thing. <laughs> so anyway, just remember that all you do is um, cut off the legs and you have great shorts. For Picasso's, I think this is the one that I had on in the email that you may have received. This is a uh, seersucker in a little check. We don't have this particular fabric anymore, but we do have this fantastic multicolored seersucker. That would be really fun for pants. This is one pant that frankly doesn't look quite as good in a super, super drapey fabric. It can handle something that has a little less drape, a little more crisp, because you want to see that shaping to the pants of the Picasso's. But this you can wear with so many different colors. Here's a seersucker stripe. That would make great pants. Can't be afraid of that stripe since it's so narrow. I had a comment last week. Last week I threw the fabrics on the floor. I'm trying not to do that this time, but it, it may happen. <laughs> All right, uh, but I, I couldn't resist. I had to bring these. This is my all-time favorite Picasso pants. They are cotton and lycra. And we have that fabric. And 
we had quite a bit of it. And I'm telling you, this is the best fabric I've sewn with for a long time. I made these pants last summer. I traveled with them to our events here and there. I traveled with them on the plane, in them on the plane, uh, in the car, to work, everywhere. It's just the best fabric. It's cotton and a little bit of lycra, but it has a little bit of a sheen on them. And I don't know why, but this fabric does not really break down. I've washed these, I've dry cleaned them, I've done both of them, uh, both the processes, and they look the same. And frankly, they don't wrinkle very much, and I don't have to press them very often. And I highly recommend, if you want a great, all-purpose pair of Picasso pants, this is the fabric. And it's only $18 a yard, which is not bad. All right. Um, I love linen, and you know we talked about the cross-dyed linens. I'm not. You know, where did they go? See, I've rearranged everything, and now I don't know where anything is. Well, never mind. Where are they? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right in front of me. Okay. Here's a beautiful pale gray cross dyed. That would make a gorgeous pair of pants. Wear that with that dusty pink, uh, soft blues, my kind of green. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're a earth tone person or a, a warmer, a, a warm tone person or a cool tone person. I think you can wear this color as wonderful pants. Don't forget about the linen prints. This is fantastic. Now, you may think that's big and bold, and it is, but you put that on some uh, like Hudson pants, Fantastic. Now this is a, a, a semi-sheer, almost handkerchief weight linen, but at the exact way that this was. Okay, I'm putting this on the floor. You get to see that. All right, so the same, this is the same fabric, but this time a little bit of a sheer lining. This happens to be a mesh, but you could use China silk, you could use Batiste, any sort of very light, what you could use another handkerchief linen in a solid color actually. So you make two pairs of pants, connect them at the waist, you have lined pants. Right. Now I've put together some combinations of some things here I want to show you. Alright, so this is the linen viscose. could be either the bottom or the top and put that with this beautiful rayon print, viscose print, in this tulip pattern. This could be the pants, top, top pants, either one. I love this combination. Very unique combination. Now we have some laundered linen. This is so heavy, I'm not sure I can oh, get this up here. Let's see if that'll work. I don't know if it's going to hold or not. <laughs> Aaron's going to help me here. I don't know why linen is so heavy. Got it? I'll just hold it. You hold it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll make this quick. All right. So laundered linen and make just make a beautiful cottage shirt, summer shirt, and wear it just a little bit of a, a two-inch longer, a little tank under it. That just looks like a breath of sherbet and summer to me. Okay.
here we have the I'm pulling this out for one reason because every time we look at a fashion magazine or something that really intrigues us there's this lilac and green color combination so this is the viscose and nylon see that beautiful drape This is a brand new Italian viscose knit that we just got in. We just got in a few of these that are just incredible. But here's our color combination. Isn't that pretty? But you could also put a woven with it. woven it's a boil cotton boil again might need a little uh, either nude undergarments or a little tank underneath it but the weight of the boil just speaks to me as summer summer shirts all right so those are my combinations that I put together let's talk about what you wouldn't use I can't believe I'm going to tell you what not to use <laughs> Because the minute I say that, someone will make something out of something I would say no to, and it's always wonderful. Uh, but <laughs> um, this is a cotton sateen. And I love this fabric. But there's no, not much drape to it. So I would reserve this for a slimmer pant. It has lycra in it, so you might be able to make the helix pants or even some, a jean style pant, but for a flowy, larger legged pant, it wouldn't be for me. I would think it would, it would feel and even sound, there's a sound to this. You know, you can always tell sometimes about the sound of the fabric. So keep those stiffer sateens for something else. Uh, there was something else I wasn't gonna use. Um, hmm. Oh, right. Well, yeah, the boils. As much as I love boil, I'm crazy about boil, I would use this as a top weight and not a bottom weight. There's a billowy drape to it, but not a weighty drape. You're looking for weighty drape when you're looking at bottom weights. And again, it's somewhat sheer, which is fine. Uh, you can always underline it or line it. But for me, this is not a fabric that has the right weightiness to it for a bottom weight. In the wintertime, I avoid corduroys, that, duck cloths, that, those sorts of things. Um, I love silk pants. This is a fantastic silk. I'm back to what I do like. I'm already, I'm already into what I do like. Sorry about that. But look at that, wouldn't that make a gorgeous pair of pants? That beautiful drape, mm -hmm. it's a silk crepe. And that one you might bring a little closer so people could see the detail in the print. That help? Yeah. yeah. This is a, a brand new fabric that we just got in from, uh, from Etro, the designer Etro. It has a um, kind of a Liberty of London type motif to it. But I think this would make great pants too. Kind of the combination of a floral, a paisley, a I don't know. Mm -hmm. Beautiful colors. Very, very unique colorway. That one you might bring closer as well so they can see the print. All right. Maybe lay it out on the table a little bit. There we go. Does that help? I'll hold it up. <laughs> okay, yes, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> what else do we need? <laughs> Just go and buy the customers. They All would right. like to see some of the smaller prints. Um, 
so they can see it a little more so a little okay. closer so sounds good <laughs> sounds good all right do we have mm -hmm. any other questions we have quite a few one of the main ones is what are you wearing uh-huh i'm wearing the helix top and it's the one that ha is the the spiral so there's a seam where is it well the front wraps around and becomes one sleeve and the background wraps around and becomes another sleeve. And this was a striped fabric, but by the time you cut it on the straighter grain, but sew it together, it turns into this diagonal uh, motif. And then I'm wearing, and this is in a viscose lightweight sweater knit. And then the pants are the Picasso pants in the uh, viscose linen. Okay, and just kind of to remind people that all these fabrics Oh, be yes. online. All the fabrics that I've shown will be online. Now, what do we mean by online? On the Facebook page? No. Um, we'll have a category on the website as well um, with all the fabrics that you've talked about. Okay. Did everybody hear that? I, prob I, I don't know if you heard that or not because <laughs> you're not answering. <laughs> we are going to post the uh, fabrics that I've just talked about on our website. Okay. And another question. Um, when ordering online, how do we know the weight of the fabric? How do we tell if it drapes? Mm. Well, there's certain clues about the description of the fabric. For instance, like um, visco, anything, anything that has the word crepe, anything that has, the answer to that is you don't. Why don't you call us? You know, it's, we try to describe whether a fabric is drapey or not. We, we use that word a lot in our descriptions. But in term, and sometimes the actual name of the fabric is descriptive, but it's still tricky. And so you're welcome to email or call us, or we can always send you a sample. Okay, and um, you talked briefly about lining pants. Would that work for a polyester so there's not static? Yes, whenever you choose a lining, for whatever fiber you're using it against, you want to use something opposite. So I wouldn't line polyester with polyester. I wouldn't line silk with silk. You want to use an opposing fiber and then you don't get the static. Okay, and do you recommend laundering these fabrics before cutting? Yes, uh, we have this uh, recommendation, I'll call it, around here that if you're unsure about how a, a fabric is going to behave, take four inches off of the corner and throw it in the washing machine and see what happens. Then you know how much it's going to shrink, if it's going to shrink, if it's going to bubble, crinkle, shred. Um, that's the only way you're really going to know. Every fabric is washable. It really just depends on whether you like the results or not. And we do recommend that you pre-wash fabrics, even though you may not be ultimately laundering the garments, which is sometimes what happens to me. If I'm spending a lot of time on certain garments, I'm not going to throw them in my washing machine. Uh, I've built in too much effort and detail into a garment. That's going to the dry cleaners, even though I might have pre-washed the fabric, just to see how what happens. Do you find that viscous shrinks? Not particularly. Uh, viscous, I've not had a lot of trouble with viscous sh shrinking. But the minute I say that, the fabric that you get will. So you have to you have to test it. But generally, it is not a fiber that shrinks easily. Viscose has come through a lot of different generations. Uh, the old rayons that we know of when I was growing up in the 60s, 50s, 60s, and 70s uh, weren't very good, fa well, they weren't as good as they are now. I shouldn't say they weren't good fabrics, but um, they didn't dye well, uh, didn't hold their color, they wrinkled terribly and they weren't that beautiful. But there's been some new generations thanks to Monsanto and other uh, manufacturers that have perfected uh, the processing of viscose and rayon and they are a lot better than they used to be. And that's why we see so, many, so much of it. Viscose was invented to be the artificial silk because silk was so expensive. It's still that way. So it has the properties of silk in terms of drape and beauty. Um, and, and wearability, but it's less expensive to produce and therefore that's why we see so much of it now and less and less silk in ready to wear, even from high-end designers. Okay, um, what, what is the recommended length for the Picasso? Where should it fall on your leg? Well, the ones I, I wish you could see me today, I think mine are too short. I say two inches above the top of the ankle. 
is the optimum length. I see some people wearing them too short. I think you can get them too short, and I, the ones I have on today are too short. The ones I've made since are an inch longer. So what I'm looking at today is three inches above my ankle. I like two. What should you do for a flat backside when altering the pattern? Oh, um, maybe you should, uh, I wonder if this person saw the beginning of the uh, tutorial. If not, why don't you email me and I'll send you the, uh, a little, um, little how-to on that. But it's basically pinching the, you pinch this right here about half an inch or so and that will take out quite a bit of fabric and you you pinch it here and blend it back to zero at the side seam but you can email me and we can get into it a little bit more um, could you add long darts to your Valencia pants probably like the Hudson yeah you know what people have asked me that I've never done it but I don't think it's quite like that because you, if you could see how the Hudson's are built they're not straight to begin with and I have the feeling it m might not work on the other hand I do remember uh, making a pair of Valencia's with a side a dart at this where the side seam would be and inserting a little tab and that worked but I've never tried adding four darts to the to the Valencia's um, if you've made the Valencia's and you have them and it's why you're asking the question why don't you pin some darts in those and see what happens, or baste some darts in the ones that you have. Okay. Um, I prefer less gather at the waist. Do you have hints for changing um, patterns that have a gathered waist? I'm open to adding a zipper. Um, any ideas? Well, you can always add some amount of darting. Uh, if, if there's a side seam, you can, instead of having a, a seams that are straight up, you can begin to shape them, and then you can add as many as four darts across the back, two and two, and even darts in the front. You might try our uh, waistband treatment where it's flat across the front, a little bit of easing around the sides, and then take out the back uh, with darts. You can also uh, begin to change the angle of this seam and begin to bring it in and you would shape this seam a little bit more but that's really a rebuild of a pattern and it makes me think maybe you should start with a pattern where you like a more fitted look anyway because sometimes it's just you know patterns are what they are for what they are and it's just easier to start with a pattern that's that's more suited to what you like should the Hudson and the West End also be two inches above the ankle? Yes. The Hudson's and the West End sh also should be at least two inches above the ankle. Okay. Um, we have another question about the cotton silk gauze print. Um, cotton silk gauze. Oh, cotton silk. Um, ranunculus that flower that I can never pronounce correctly. Um, can't quite see all of the question, unfortunately. Uh, maybe this is something we can answer. Um, all right, on. We'll, we'll answer, we'll try to answer that question. Oh, I just spotted another fabric. I forgot about this one. Gotta show you this one. This is a pro from Prada. Mm -hmm. This make a great pair of pants. Now, would you, which direction would you place that print? This one, vertically. Vertically. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see if we have anything else. I think we're, I think we're good. Okay, well, let's just, I want to mention two things. First of all, I have a, cl a class on Blueprint, Craftsy Blueprint, called DIY Fitting, that takes you to complete fitting of tops and uh, the mimosa pants. We happen to use that one of our patterns in that class. And then we have a tutorial on our website called DIY Pants Fitting that you may want to check out, which is a standalone, uh, downloadable, printable tutorial. So, okay. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll probably see you next week. We're already thinking about what to do.